Welcome to the madhouse. <laughs> It's time to get your fucking horror on, live from their dumpy little studio in beautiful Norwalk, California. It's the Mindless Horror Podcast with Sammy and Anthony. Alright, what is going on ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Mindless Horror Podcast, the podcast where we talk all things horror, or if we have guests, all things about them. Today on my podcast we have uh, a special guest, we have a freelance artist, graphic design artist, or artist, uh, whatever your needs are. Uh, we have a uh, freelance music creator and a host of a podcast called The Personal Paradigm, which is now on Spotify, Google Podcasts, all those fun stuff. Um, it is my cousin, my graphic design artist, Andrew Zaragoza. How are you? Pretty good, man. Uh, thanks for having me on the show. I'm just I'm glad to be here in the same space. We're in, the, in the same room. You know, quarantined in the same room. Definitely six feet apart. Yep. Just the same familiar space where all the magic happens as far as just a lot of different uh, past guests that you've had on here. And just being part of this development is, is pretty neat. I mean, you're on, you're on channel, you're on number 800 right now, or 850? For subscribers? Yeah. 872. 872, yeah, that's, that's very impressive. I mean, it's, it's I'm trying. We're on the road to 1,000, man. Um... Yeah, last week we were on the personal paradigm, um, and that was a fun time. Put that on my channel. It's up on your stuff too. Um, we had a good stuff, a lot of good, a lot of good times on that. Me, you, Sammy. That was the last time I think Sammy was in studio too. Yeah, it has, it has been a while since that happened. That was, I mean, it felt like it was more than a week ago, but it was just about last week that we can have. Yeah. Especially with a lot going on as far as just overall climate. Things are a lot more at a quicker, more rapid pace. Um, so it's, it's good just to like take a step back and re revisit you know, the past channels that we have had. Uh, and just really see where Mindless Horror is going to be going. And to uh, really just grab everybody else's attention as far as this overall collaboration that we have. Pod- First of all, and, and Mindless Horror, and now to be a guest on Mindless Horror is another... Another experience. Definitely. No, yeah, and and you mentioned everything going so rapidly, like this this whole coronavirus pandemic happened so fast with everybody. It was like one day everybody was living their lives, the next day everything started shutting down. And it just happened so quick, so it's like it's giving me more time to make more content than usual and put out more of a, a variety of videos for people whether it be a podcast or a, a, an original video. Um, lately, all this week has been a lot of original videos, which started on Sunday with Tormented Society. Uh, and then through that, I actually gained a partnership with them to uh, be a like kind of like, you know, the YouTube part of their their group, which is really cool. So that was really exciting to, to gain a partnership with, with Jinx and Lena and the whole Tormented Society and just kind of... Uh, start that partnership with this whole week. I mean, I've had they've given me exclusive uh, character announcements, which has been cool. I've been breaking down a lot of those characters. Um, of course, this week they announced um, Calypso, Boy, and um, Distemper. I saw the Calypso one. It was really, really interesting. I mean, I'm still trying to pull it up right now, but how they put it all together, man. The the Calypso one was an interesting one. Calypso the Witch. Um, and it's been actually really fun breaking them down. I remember actually the other night I was filming a video and I literally had to like turn the screen over to you and be like, what does this look like to you? Like, I had to like bring you involved in it just to get your second. Is that the one with like the wood? Yeah. yeah. We, were, we didn't know if it was wood or flesh, which was dis, uh, Distempered's video. Um, and it, it was it was very interesting. I mean, the way they've been all like designing these has just been very interesting um, as far as... Uh, revealing these characters and giving us this little teaser of who these characters are. You'll probably find it on my channel. Uh, it's actually right there. I think the, one of the first two videos, uh, if you just click on the channel right there, I know. They don't got very many videos up, so I'm trying to help them um, broad their um, horizons as far as not just Instagram, but 
let's go just, let's go to YouTube. You know, YouTube's got a giant audience that you can work with, and it's it's really fun to uh, collab with with all these all these fun uh, people and stuff. But I mean, we got a partnership going with Tormented, um, and you know, we're working with you as far as graphic design goes, and um, you know, we we've been collabing a lot with our friends at Fracture Compass Productions. Um, I, mean, I I think just honestly, like I said on your podcast, just collaboration is huge for channels. You know what I mean? Artwork and logo design. I remember you hit me up, and then this one one design after another. It's like, hey, yeah. And now some of your designs are actually on our merchandise, which is cool. And then, and then I, I created your um, a little bit some of your merch as far as the beanies and the yeah, the beanies and the hats. And like, of course, like me and Sammy be rocking the hats, and then. Uh, you know, I mean, I think we did, we have a giveaway, we still haven't even announced that giveaway winner yet. <laughs> it was for 800 subscribers, we have a hat to, to give away, or no, a beanie, I'm sorry, we announced the hat, and we haven't mailed out the hat yet, we've just been so busy, and, you know, money's a little tight, because with mailing out stuff, it costs money, um, especially with a, a thing like a hat, I mean, you gotta pay extra as far as, um, as shipping goes, and, and the package size, and the weight, and all that, I mean, it's not too much weight-wise, but... Um, for sure, I gotta get that hat out. And um, but, I mean, just collabing with all these people, all these amazing like creators and stuff. It's just, it's just been fun, man. I mean, with you and your and your art. I mean, you know, it, it's a way for me to go up to you and be like, listen, this is what I have in mind. This is my idea. Go ahead and try to do what you can off that. And and you always deliver. You always make it the best. And you always give us a really good quality um stuff with that i think one of my favorites other than the mindless or podcast logo is the um shoot the shit logo because yeah i think that one in cinema dudes yeah the ramones yeah the ramones logo after looking at my templates and just the different things that I could knock out, um, it was so cool because we had, we found the fist, and that's when I first listened to my vector pool and, you know, on all the stocks that I had, and lo and behold, they had the hand with the mic, and it's just yeah. pretty much like, this, I, I felt right out right off the bat, I was like, this is where we're going to go with it. Yeah. Blue and, or no, green. It was green and black, and yeah. Simple. Kibble simple. Right? And it just, you know, it, right, it reminds me of um, Hunter S. Thompson's, uh, logo that he did something very similar except he had two tips okay and i think that kind of really grabbed my inspiration not only seeing his but just uh you know the green and the fist like the fist in the air yeah the, yeah it's a strong symbol because not only did they use but rage against the machine that's one of the like main logos you know what i mean like and it's a big it's kind of like a big a big symbol in today's society where you know it's one of those things where um it's more on a on a line of kind of symbolizing the whole, you know. This is what we're gonna say. We have the mic, you know. We we we're the we're the uh, voice for the voiceless, and all that. That's how I've always looked at it. Like if you look at Rage Against the Machine, a lot of their music is political. And so with that, you know, it's like them trying to say like we're we're the voice of the voiceless for you guys. You know what I mean? So I see that a lot with Shoot the Shit. It's mostly like. We're going to say and talk about whatever we want. And that's just us. That's us being us. You know, I mean, whatever pops up in our in our heads or whatever we want to talk about, that's what that podcast is for. The horror behind it, you got two horror haunt fans and you got two scare actors. You know what I mean? But you're just now you're just looking at our day to day lives and what we think and what we, you know, what we've experienced and all that. I think really creating a whole channel around just that. That uh, brand, that persona, just that personality, it really just adds more to just, yeah, this is your guys' everyday life, and this is what you guys do. It's not, yeah. It's not like there is horror involved in it, and, you know, there is a specialized channel for horror, which is the Nights of Horror that I deeply respect. And, but just the amount of um, channels that you're also opening up that really 
capture, you know, your own interests and help you yeah. develop. Uh, those platforms also is really, it's really admirable because you have, you can, you can look to different audiences, you can look to different uh, people, you know, some of them might intersect with one another, uh, but ultimately you're making all these connections and just really collaborating in that way is, is really, really cool because that's how you build your social circle, that's how you build your yeah. networks and um, just being part of that and contributing to your logos and contributing to all the other expansions that you have with your other uh, partners is, is really, really cool because uh, not only on your side, but on my end too, there's a lot of different people that I connect with and collaborate with and we really just, we, we, we hit it off, I mean, like just making music, uh, collaborating and bringing different platforms and different businesses um, together and integrating them is, it's crazy. I mean, not all, like, granted, yeah, we, we're, we're in the middle of just this social distance entertainment, but the social factor has not, it hasn't been any, any farther apart, uh, I wouldn't say farther apart, but it hasn't been any more connected. Uh, yeah. In the last couple of weeks, um, in the digital space, than it has been ever. I mean, uh, physically, there is that, that that bubble that has only expanded because of this issue. But digitally, and just connecting, even just through text, through video, just the amount of connection there is now, it's, it's ridiculous. I think they were saying on the news too. Like, I guess uh, internet, um, you know, online has gone up thirty to fifty percent more now because of what is going on you know everybody i mean students have to be using technology to do online classing now and it's like you know content creators are on every day regardless you know checking their stats or listening to music editing videos or just on the internet in general you know and and researching for videos or just kind of just on the internet just bullshitting and then you know you have the regular you know um social uh, you know social media people who are just on every day instagram and, and twitter and everything just just looking up what people are are doing or you know following their celebrities or liking pictures or posting pictures at that I mean posting a tweet uh, same thing with Facebook posting statuses liking pictures you know chatting with people and you know I mean it, it's just it's it's amazing to see how much the internet has changed over the years you know what I mean it's like from when it started till now like if you would have asked me in 2004 like this is what life was gonna be I would have been like no way dude I mean, I was playing outside with my buddies, and, and we were riding bikes and riding skateboards and, and just, you know, having a good time. Fast forward to 2020, and I'm over here on the computer more than anything now. Yeah, it's just, it's, it's, to me, I see, I see a lot of different outcomes, you know, not only back then, but moving forward. And, yeah, like, 2004, I was, I was nine years old in bands, and I was, learning, I was walking to school, and just all the physical things going on. The routine of school, elementary school, and learning music at that time. Yeah. Um, to like two years later, you know, just promoting going in, going into middle school and having my very first laptop by your dad, uh, Uncle Bear. Mm -hmm. Having the very first laptop and not even beginning to like imagine what the internet was going to be like. Like, yeah, creating a MySpace and learning HTML and embedding codes was pretty cool at that age. And you know, that was that was just. just a small, a small snippet, snippet of what, what it is now. now. I mean, going, going to two different middle schools, schools, I had friends I connected with uh, mm -hmm. on MySpace and just creating, creating plans of just going, going to the mall, mall, you know, and actually seeing if that would happen uh, through digital, uh, the digital space. And now 2020, it's like, man, now, now I'm creating a, a own business um, for myself. Yeah. I mean, look at, dude, for example, look at your laptop, man. It's a freaking... A laptop slash, and it can be a tablet if you yeah, want to. It can be a two -in -one. Like everything I do, it's through the computer, and I cannot, I cannot be more grateful for that investment I made last year. Just, it's just, I take it wherever I go. I get a lot of, I get a lot of shit done, man. And then yeah. the biggest question that people ask me is, how do you do it? <laughs> and I'm like, like, I mean, being being an, an adult now and learning computers at such a young age, I mean, I got, I got people older than me that I'm, I'm training. You know, yeah. To learn the, the, the teachers, the, uh, the teaching stuff and the education stuff, but, but not only working in education, but also in my other line of job too. It's, it's like technology uh, nowadays is, is, has grown so much and it, it's only continually, continually going to advance. Um, and we can see that as evident with kid, kids, like 
little 10 year olds and, um, and 11 year olds are now learning online yeah oh yeah they're on their ipads or tablets playing games watching youtube videos you know doing all this stuff and it, you know i mean it helped for us too growing up was we had our cousin mouse who actually was very invested in building pcs and and he and he would teach us you know if we asked him he would he would teach us and we would learn over that and it just grew from there you know i mean just with stuff like that i mean passing down knowledge and stuff it's just you know you've learned over the years just more and more and as you learn the basics you start okay i need to go more intermediate now i need to go more advanced and and as as time goes on you get better and better at that kind of stuff and i think it's i think it's a, a really interesting world we're living in right now i mean for example elon musk just screen printed 3d printed a thousand freaking uh, air machines to deliver out to hospitals man like in three days man like like a thousand dude like if you would have told me again 10 years ago like we we're gonna have 3d printers that can do shit like that i would have never believed you i would have been like bullshit you know that's only that's only shit you see in science fiction movies you know what i mean it's like and it, it, it's just it's been it's been growing so going back to like with the channels and everything and it's like you know i mean you would have told me in october like hey you're gonna be doing a podcast with a bunch of scare actors you're gonna be starting channels with a bunch of scare actors you're gonna be collaborating with all these scare actors i would have been like no i'm not i don't i barely know these people and now they're some of my best friends it's like you know i mean i i do a podcast with with jen and jackie who are on ghost who were on ghost town last year for the first year um very talented scare actors and um if you would have told me like hey you're gonna do a podcast with these guys i would have been like mm, no <laughs> but now i'm you know every now and then when we get when we can get together we, we do a podcast i mean we, we all live busy lives so when we get together it's it's a fun time but um i don't see us doing a shoot the shit anytime soon only just because of what's going on and i don't know how long this is going to last for um but when we do get back together that's going to be a good podcast and it's going to be a well-needed podcast because we probably haven't seen each other for couple months at that point but i mean with kevin and ruth i mean matt slash games that we just launched like this last month you know and it's like it, it's it's freaking it's you know it's going a little slow at the moment but all channels start slow and they make their way up but i mean we're getting views and we're getting you know an audience of some sort people are tuning in and watching our stuff i'd rather have freaking one person watch than no people you know what i mean so i mean if you would have told me i was going to collab with them and meet these people it was like it was unreal because with with people like Jen, or with people like Ruth and and Kevin, it's like they're so down to earth people, and to get the honor and privilege to actually work with them and make content with them has been so fun. I mean, you heard last night we were filming a fucking Uno Let's Play, and uh, we were all losing our. If you would have heard inside the mic, everybody was losing their shit, but me, I was getting so frustrated and mad. But at the end of the day, it's just for the content because we have a good time doing it, which um that video's up now too if people want to watch it i mean uh but i mean with Cin the cinema dudes podcast uh lucille he is one of the most probably in the top of famous monsters for ghost town and i never thought in a million years after being at haunt a guy i barely knew even at haunt i never thought i would freaking uh, you know collab with him and never work with him you know i mean he's such a cool guy he's outside of his haunt monster there's more to the person than there is just his monster you know what i mean like it's like it's, it's very interesting because you you crossed the threshold of just seeing somebody um you know as a scare actor and you're now connecting with them on a more professional level but also on a more collaborative level too i mean these guys who know um and experience just what their their actor and their, and their scare actor is um, and you know to scare, scare like you know the guests and everything. Yeah. And to actually come outside of their scare. Their shell, yeah. And things like that, and to really just connect on another level um, is, is is pretty neat because the I don't know it's kind of for me for me it's hard to explain but I do see how how it kind of works. I mean. Yeah. Being being you know that's a horror and having that that brand you know allows you access to get into. Um, so, many so many different opportunities. It's just, mm -hmm. you know, like, you were just talking uh, recently about, like, media media opportunities. You know, mm -hmm. so now you're actually a media um, producer, and you gain access to, like, front-end footage. Yeah. That you're able to put onto your profile. Definitely. No, it's, it, I mean, the, the first, I mean, last year we, we were so honored and, 
and thankful for gaining media for Queen Mary. Yeah. Queen Mary invited us out to their event for free, should I may add, and they gave us free drinks and, you know, we got front of the line for everything and we just got to go hang out and stuff and just to be around other content creators that are some of my friends in the YouTube world. It was so fun to finally be up there with some of them, you know what I mean? Like, I, I see, I've watched them on YouTube and I've seen them go to all these events as, as press and media and I, I've always, it's been my dream to kind of go out there and represent the name and I finally got to do that this year. Not once, but two other times of uh, Midsummer Scream, Rick West. I mean, for him to come down and di do what he did and give us a, a great interview, that was awesome. That was actually our last in-person interview we did before this whole like kind of epidemic went down, you know what I mean? And it's like, for him to come down and for one, he gave away two gold bat tickets. Now, if you're not aware what the gold bat is, it's like literally the best ticket you can buy for Midsummer Scream. Does it have, like, is it like, is it's it's like a VIP pretty much, and it's you get like they have this thing called the Hall of Shadows where a bunch of home haunters come and set up little mazes. You get front of the line for all that. You get early uh, entry priority to the um, panels, so you get to get in, like a separate line other than general admission to get into the panels first, so you can grab a, a good seat before anyone else. Um, and you get to get early entry into the convention like an hour early before anyone else. Um, <laughs> Being that we just gave a general mission ticket, which was still a really cool thing that we did, I mean, when he came out and just kind of surprised us with two gold bat tickets, I was like, oh my god, that is awesome. Like, for him to do something like that, he, like, he didn't have to do that one bit, and he and he did it. And, um, you know, so collabing with so many people in this industry, I mean, we've met so many great people. I mean, not only Rick West, but Ted Doherty, who is one of the head honchos at 13th, uh, or Plague Productions, I'm sorry. Um, and he is responsible for um, some great, you know, coming, bringing some great haunts to life. You know, I mean, a lot of his, um, a lot of his, like, things have to do with, like, this year he helped design a, a, a key factor to, um, a key factor to Not Scary Farm, which was Origins, which really revamped the whole kind of, um, the whole the whole space you know what i mean like it really put this storyline into full effect so and he also revamped the entire he, him and his team revamped the entire uh los angeles haunted hayride which was an amazing event this year uh and we got to interview that guy i mean that that was cool and you know i mean john mazari guy who composed all the music for killer clowns from outer space i mean <laughs> this is coming from a kid who was a fan of this movie growing up and you know still a fan of this movie to this day and it's like you know if you know you would have told little me like hey you're gonna be friends with that guy one day i would have been like no i'm not and dude it's to the point now where like we're on a first name basis now i have this guy's phone number like literally we'll text each other every now and then to see how we're doing and you know if anything's upcoming events or anything to meet up we'll like text each other like hey you're gonna be at this event or something like I am just so thankful for all these opportunities that I've gotten and it, it's getting me a step closer to being what I want to be with this channel which is the next big thing in horror. I want to really put my name out there. I want to be um I want to be you know, I mean, I mean I, I've always I've always wanted to be a, a movie director. I mean, that's one of my 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 favorite that's one of my big passions. I mean, I love watching movies. I love like analyzing stuff in movies and I geek out over like camera shots and stuff like that, but I want to be a, a movie director, and horror movies is really um, not the main focus as a movie director, but that's where I think I'll start. I could Because I already got a bunch of horror projects that we're going to be filming. I mean, it's probably going to be postponed for a while now, and if if they even get out this year now, I mean, it, this, this whole epidemic really put a big setback on everything. You know what I mean? I remember you telling me just the amount of storyboarding that you had needed for that. Yeah. And just... Looking into your stories and just the uh, scripts that you have already set up and creating a storyboard for the initial one that was going to be slated to be in production. Uh, uh, this next month, actually, in April. Month. Yeah. And to really have it kind of postponed on, you know, because of right now. Yeah. This whole, whole over going on issue um, really now allows more time to just plan, plan, plan a lot more to really yeah. your guys' settings, but, I mean, that's, that's one of the coolest things, I mean, 
look at well looking in here, I mean you got all of all your film stuff ready to go. Oh yeah. The corner, yeah. I mean there's this corner of just equipment ready to go. I mean what really sucks is I was really looking forward to uh I mean I'm not saying it's cancelled at all. It's not cancelled. It's gonna just be postponed until everything's sane again and everything's okay but I, I was just really looking forward to getting behind the camera in april working with everybody and and getting everybody together and and seeing this the, these characters and seeing this film come to life finally this is something i've had in the in the writing table for like two years now and it's always been a dream of mine to get these out there and we almost literally had that opportunity to start production i mean we we were really moving forward with it faster than you know it, it took to actually just you know write this and get it out there you know i mean we had you know me and jackie had writing sessions and we fixed a lot of things we changed a lot of things and we we made it a, we made a solid we had a solid script going and then you know we we gave the script to all the people who we wanted involved and they were all in for it and then we had a production meeting uh like a you know like i think it was in february we had a production meeting and we were going to do one more production meeting and then start the the essential filming we were going to go we were going to take everybody out to like thrift shops and, and try to look for a bunch of stuff and um you know get costumes and stuff but i mean it was going freaking amazing and then you know all of a sudden like little by little you started hearing more about this coronavirus and then eventually everything just shut down everything just stopped it's like the world just stopped and i was like yeah no this is it was just it, it was just a big bummer um because i was very much looking forward to doing this you know next month it was literally my next big project that i was really looking forward to and and i couldn't wait to start going and stuff but i mean i was trying to get these done back to back because everyone that we have involved in this is busy come time summer you know usually haunt tryouts are there all the conventions start coming up you know and then Come time September, haunt season starts. So yeah, I mean, not only will they be busy as scare actors and, and attending all these conventions and stuff, because Fracture Compass not only are scare actors, but they have their channel too that they release content with. You know what I mean? So, you know, once summer starts, it's it's go time. You know, it's like okay. We, I mean, not to mention we have announcement season going to be coming around pretty soon with Halloween Horror Nights. So I mean, that's more stuff to cover. Um, and I mean, with us, I mean, as far as when conventions start, I mean, it's a grind for us. We just, we're, we're releasing content double than what we usually do and all the panels, vlogs, uh, everything, you know what I mean? It's like Midsummer Scream, I think we released like 20-something videos that week. Yeah. It was like, that weekend was like, okay, film, come home, upload the footage, go to bed. It was literally like that was my schedule for that weekend. And then I wake up the next day early, make sure all the batteries are charged, make sure everything's charged, everything's ready to go, bring all the equipment. Sunday, do the same thing. While I was actually waiting in line for panels, I brought my laptop so I can literally put the footage onto my computer. That way I had space on my cameras because not only were we recording panels, we were recording maze walkthroughs, we were doing interviews, we were recording the show floor, uh, people cosplaying. But we also record podcasts too, which takes up a lot of space on the cameras. Um, we No, we actually set up in a corner of the convention center and just kind of did our own podcasts. Like we did, we, I think we did like three or two mindless horror podcasts that weekend and it was, it was insane. But I mean, we had a full blown schedule of everything we were going to do every hour of the convention was open. I felt like you for a little bit. Like I actually had a planned schedule for this. You know what I mean? No, yeah, they do. Cause it was like, okay, from opening till this time, we're going to walk the show floor, go in the hall of shadows. This time to this time is this panel. This time to this time, we got to go to this panel. Okay. We have a little free time podcast and then we'll walk hall of shadows for a little bit. This time to this time, the next panel, you know what I mean? It was an hour to hour from the time they open to the time they close of what we were doing that entire day for Saturday and Sunday. So... The thing with Midsummer Scream, and it was it was really cool for Rick West to elaborate on this was, he he likes he could keep selling tickets. I mean, I think they only go up to like forty thousand tickets, so forty thousand people are there. Yeah, but it doesn't feel that way to be honest. Like it doesn't look like forty thousand people are there, but I think because everybody's scattered in different areas, like there's a couple thousand people in the Hall of Shadows, a couple thousand people on the show floor, a couple thousand people in the lobby attending panels and stuff. You know what I mean? So, uh, Long Beach Convention Center. So, um, 
the thing about Rick West, though, that I liked that he brought up, and they really, like, I was like, oh, thank God you're one of these people, because, like, people like Comic-Con do this all the time, but he can keep, he can go past that 40,000 mark easy. He can keep selling tickets to, to literally make it so it's like a shoulder-to-shoulder -so -shoulder traffic if he really wanted to. Yeah, he can go max capacity if he wants to, but he stops at a certain number of tickets because he wants people to feel comfortable walking around. You don't want to go to a convention and have to shoulder to shoulder like 50,000 people. You know what I mean? It's like you don't want to have to walk by everybody and you can't really enjoy anything. Everything's too crowded. It's like he knows the, the limit of people. I mean, the fire marshal literally told him one year, like, you why would you stop? You can keep selling tickets. And he's like, no. He goes, the, the less, you know, the more, he, the more, the less people that we have in here, the more people will feel more comfortable and, you know, ha you know, yeah, I mean, it's like. It, it was really cool of him to, to say something like that because then you look at a convention like Comic-Con and it's like they will go until the literal max capacity of people. And it is literally insane just to get in. I mean, if you look at the freaking... If you look at the lines, for example, Hall H, which is the biggest hall they have at that damn convention center and usually where all of the major companies go, I mean, it is literally people camping out just to get into that damn panel. And especially when Marvel does something, like people will camp outside the day before just so they can get a spot... Mind you, they're not even guaranteed a spot to get in before because they got to let all the press in first. And after press is in, then they fill the rest of the seats. So you can camp, but you're not guaranteed to get a freaking spot. You know what I mean? So it's like it's sometimes it's worthless. I guess if you're like the first couple of people, yeah, you're guaranteed to get in because not all of press is going to take up that entire hall. But if you're like at a past, if you're past the halfway point and you're camping out, there's no point, dude. You're not getting in. Yeah. I think we went twice. Yeah. Yeah, because we went like 2005, 2004. So I don't think Iron Man was even a thought yet. But. The difference being between that time and now, it's like, okay, now they're more of a media-based convention where it's like, not only is it about the collectibles and, and all the, you know, you know, comics and stuff, but they're bringing in productions of movies and, and stuff. Mind you, yes, a lot of them are comic book or sci-fi or, or something related to that, but some of them are just not. Some of them are just there to promote their shit. And it's like, I don't like that Comic-Con went that route. I mean, everything's comic related. There's still the exclusives. There's still the, you know, all the meet and greets and stuff. But, I mean, you have production companies that will come in and promote a movie like freaking, I don't know, the next, I mean, you'll have production companies. I mean, I guess they try to keep it sci-fi and stuff, but like uh, a movie, for example, Days of Confused. Say if that movie was brand new and they just come to promote, I mean, that's got nothing to do with comics, dude. Come on. I mean, I get it. It's It's a funny movie. And don't get me wrong. I love that movie. But I'm just saying, movies like that, I mean, that come and just promote their stuff and leave, and it's like, or like the CW will bring a lot of their shows, and you know, like a show like freaking 90210, I'm like, that's got nothing to do with comics, dude. Exactly, dude. I mean, there's people now. There's a, there's there's a two split. There's a split audience with Comic Con. There's people that will go specifically for the exclusives, specifically to look for comics that they don't have, specifically to meet and get their comics signed by people. You know, just for that purpose. And then you know, they'll attend a panel or two that has something to do with comics or something. And then there's the people that go just for sp specifically for the media shit. And it's like, okay, you're buying up these tickets and you're not giving the chance of people who actually want to go and enjoy and buy exclusive buy like toys buy you know funkos i'm a big funko collector and usually comic con is where you can get the best exclusives yeah it is a huge convention man i have not been to the san diego convention center since like 2005 oh dude this year we tried to get tickets me and my dad i mean he had his card ready and everything i was up at like 6 a.m waiting on my computer 7 a.m cat i got put into the waiting lobby 8 a.m went the tickets went on sale Within an hour, they were gone. Not even an hour, like 45 minutes, they were all gone. And I don't like the lottery system that they do. It's more of a, 
Um, okay, we're going to put you in this waiting room, and it's a lottery. You can, uh, you're just going to wait here, and if we happen to pull your name, you get your shit ready. And it's like, all right, this isn't fair. Like, it should just be first come, first serve. Whoever's here first can get their tickets first and go. And it, it, what sucks about the, the waiting room, too, is as tickets sell out, it literally tells you, like, Saturday sold out. But Friday, Sunday, or Thursday, and Wednesday are still available. Friday. It became five days now. Yeah, it's starting to become a huge deal. Like it is, um, it's um, it's almost going to take up an entire week one of these years because it went. Thir it used to just be Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, which was Thursday was preview night. You couldn't buy anything. You can only look, and that way you guys you got an idea of where things were. So then come Friday morning, you can go straight to that area and just get what you wanted. Friday, of course, was the opening day. Saturday was always the biggest day where you know people come out, panels. Um, that's when a lot of like a lot of celebrities are there and then Sunday of course is closing night um, of the con now it's like Wednesday's preview night and even on preview nights now they still let you buy shit now it's not even like a you like companies now are just like you know what fuck it we want the sales uh, preview night uh, you can come buy shit so only some major companies will do that other vendors will usually just wait till Thursday or whenever officially opening day is but a lot of major companies now like Funko they were like yeah uh, Thursday we're gonna be selling shit and I was like, wow, so there's no point of a preview night anymore. Because preview night was supposed to be to, to showcase and debut a bunch of stuff. So you saw it up close, and you're like, oh, okay, I, I, this is what I'm going to buy. Now it's like, yeah, preview night, uh, this is for sale. Go ahead, and you can buy it now. Preview night originally was originally just showcasing, and that was a way to you know everyone can come to the con and, and interact with each other and you know say hi or meet people and stuff. But also, I mean, it was cool to see you know I mean that was preview night. It was just for all the vendors to showcase their stuff. That way, you know, the next day they come, you know, it was like okay, maybe the smaller vendors were selling stuff, but like the major company vendors like Mattel and all the toy companies and and everything. They that was their opportunity to debut and and showcase what they have for the weekend. That way people can, okay, this is the first thing I'm going to in the morning because I know this will sell out. Um, but, I mean, it, it, it's just gotten too insane with, with Comic-Con, dude. I mean, it, it's it's too much, and I want to go so bad. I, you, I mean, you know. You, I mean, you know with my dad and everything. You, too. We're all, we're all comic book fans. I mean, you grew up with Spawn. Spawn was you, you, you know what I mean? Spawn and Marvel, that was all you, man. Me and my dad, I mean, I love Spawn too. Spawn's a badass character, but, you know, me and my dad grew up Marvel, DC, mostly DC. My dad being a diehard Superman fan. I'm a big Batman fan, and it's like, you know, I mean, it, it, it's just, it's bullshit sometimes. You know, I, I really want to go, and it's like, every year that we try, it's like they sell out so quick. Um, and, yeah, it sucks, man. I mean, but that's uh, going back to Midsummer Scream. That's why I like Midsummer Scream because he knows when to stop and make people feel comfortable. And it, it's one of those. It's one of those conventions where it's much like it's pretty much the Comic Con for horror. It's literally where they showcase a lot of the the haunts will come and showcase what's coming to the events this year. They'll um, uh, you know talk about past stuff and and how they build stuff or they have. Um, Sometimes more Monster Palooza than Midsummer Scream, but like conventions like these will showcase live makeup demos. Um, and you can buy masks and you can buy a bunch of like there's a lot of creative vendors out there who will sell like horror themed stuff, like horror themed bags or horror themed, you know, like, you know, little little stuff like that, you know, that's really cool that you can't really find other places other than these conventions, which is really cool. And for Rick West to take the step this year to make it three days instead of two, where Friday will be just for shopping, and then which is technically like he even said it's technically like a preview night, but shopping will be open, but the Hall of Shadows won't, and you know it, there won't be there will be a couple panels, but nothing like you know too major. So if you want to check out a panel while you're at the Friday, but you know there's going to be Friday night. It's going to go from six to ten, which is four hours, which is great because I think the biggest complaint with Midsummer Scream was a lot of people were coming in Saturday Sunday and Rick West said this uh Rick West when he said this I was like okay that makes a lot of sense they purposely pack so much content where while you're at the convention it's not like you know there's always going to be something to do so you got to make hard decisions like do I really want to see this panel at this time but this panel's at the same time do I really want to go see that one it's like so they purposely do that yeah, it's like, do I really want to see this band at this time, or do I really want to go see this band? It's like, have I seen this band before? Have I, you know? So it's like, 
it, it's it's a lot of hard decision making too when coming down to write down a schedule for this place but for him to take that step him and his team to take that step and and open up a friday night just for shopping like i was so thankful for that because that is yeah that's something we can bring our camera for but it's not something we need all of our equipment for um we can just bring a camera and a couple batteries and we'll be okay just to kind of you know vlog around opening you know day and stuff but um I, I'm really excited this year because I that was one of the big things is like yeah I made a little bit of time of shopping but I want to take my time going through each aisle going through the show floor seeing what all the vendors have to offer you know what I mean because uh, one of the biggest things I bought actually last year was the killer clowns from outer space mask um, yeah that's the one I got signed by John Mazzari um, so I mean that was that's like one of my my prized possessions that I, I I mean you know how much I love that movie and Trick or Treat Studios was there. I bought that mask from them. It was like seventy bucks or fifty. I don't remember, but it it was a good price. And I thought, and so I was like, I'm, I want to really start collecting more masks. And my goal is to actually get the rest of the Killer Clowns. And um, that the Misfits mask I got from there was also from Trick or Treat Studios. They had a more better quality one, but that one was a lot cheaper. And I was like, when I got it, I'm like, this is actually really cool. So um, I actually just used it for one of my shorts. Um, uh, I made a, a quarantine short that's out now. Um, and it's literally me going insane. It's like a 30-day process of me just going insane through this quarantine. Yeah, trying to find. Yeah, it's just me. I mean, I just I, I recorded everything, and you know, I, I was just coming up with a bunch of uh, stupid ideas what I would do during a quarantine. I mean, it's not on YouTube now. As of this recording, it's out. I mean, as of this as of this being out, this podcast, it's out now. But. As of this recording, it's not out. I mean, we filmed this on a Tuesday. This didn't come out till Sunday, so um, it came out Saturday. But um, uh, it, yeah, it's it, it was a fun time making that. I mean, I actually the the last scene where I kind of go insane and stuff is like it's literally me sitting right there as me, and then me sitting right here. But I wore that mask and I have some like skeleton uh, arm gloves and stuff. So that was kind of like the way of showing me going insane. Um, I I it, it's funny in the beginning because it's all me just trying to find stuff to do and and doing and you know and then it just takes that twisted turn like i'm going insane i think that's one of the things too now that because we're forced to stay i wouldn't say forced but it's highly encouraged yeah stay indoors and not only is uh the my morning because a lot of the students are on break yeah they now converted to learning so what are they till like May fourth or something like that or May fifth? Yeah, us because of the stay at home order. At least we have Star Wars Day off. Yeah, yeah. May the fourth. Yeah, so and, that, and that's just it's on it's on a day by day basis. It might be extended, it might be shortened. But... Yeah, that's how the schools are running it too. Because I I work as a custodian and literally we're only working a day or two every week. Now we're on a rotation and. Um, Literally, we've been getting emails from our superintendent day by day, like, this is what's the updates of what's going on, and so that's all of April kids will be off, too. That's not only spring break and everything, they, I mean, there's no point of a spring break now. They're all going to be off for, like, a month now, so. Yeah, it's, I mean, to have a lot more to do on the computer, more so than I did, you know, in a classroom setting or things like that, things are still getting done as far as looking into different ways of training different ways of interacting with the students, but there's a lot more time now to just do things that we love as far as creating things. I mean, I dropped, I released and made two, two songs yesterday. I saw that. I haven't heard them yet, but I saw that. I, I, I'm i just trying to, you got to send me the SoundCloud link for that because I want to hear them. I'll send it to you, but a lot of my buddies, they're, they're sending me like different tracks and different mixes that they just want to like. So collaboration, going back to collaboration, there it is. I got hit on my phone. I was like, hey, like, I want to jam with you. I know you're going to have an EP coming out soon. Uh, shout out to Tandy. Uh, but he there you go. sent it to me, and I was like, yeah. So yesterday I had the time to actually break it down and look at it and see some of the loops or some of the beats that I have um, and just kind of arrange them in a way that kind of captures the mood for, you know, COVID, but also the creative juices, just a lot of the creative opportunity that I have now, it's, it's at an all-time high because... Everyone is at home. Everyone now has more so access to their computers and their their devices than any than any other time. And so it, it's it's really crazy. Because like just this morning, somebody hit me up and they want to they want to connect on a, on an educational workshop that she's working on. And she wanted to learn more about me, and I was like, oh, this is what I do. And so now 
Now, like, I, I don't even know who she was, but my, my one friend, like, connected me to her, and he gave her my number, and she hit me up, and I was like, yeah, let's, let's see what we're going to do, and so, and so it, it's really neat, I mean, I mean, your dad has me, and wants, or he has me here, and he wants me to do uh, two, two designs for him. Uh, about the Thor, Thor family. Yeah, I know. He was saying that the first piece that you did for him was just part one of a piece, and I guess there's like two more yeah, to it. Two more he wants, so, so that that piece, what you you knocked that piece out fast. See, that took you like a week to do. Yeah, you knocked it out fast. Yeah, I was like, uh, the way that I'm at my end right now, I want to maximize everything as far as all the skills that I have and put them into a piece. Mm -hmm. Finish it as efficiently as I can. You know, without having to really worry about just all the different imperfections, and then send it out and move on to the next one. So that way, I can just build um, a lot of the skills that I already have. And yeah. Using just different, different techniques that I have from all these past works and put them into a new one, just so that way I can knock it out um, and just put it out. And I think, I think going on that framework and just finishing things, not only as efficient, not with efficiency, but also with the expectation of somebody. You know, have waiting for something. And it's like, here, like, I already got it. Let me know what you think. We can always change it. This is what I got right now. And um, the responses have always been good as far as just, this is what I got. Let me know what you want so far. With this, like, I always call them drafts because mm -hmm. within our, your artwork, your masterpiece, it's never truly finished. No, there's always a first draft, a second draft, revisiting it and changing stuff, tweaking it, or, you know, highlighting stuff or, you know, whatever you need to do, you know? This is never going to be finished, no matter how done it'll be, uh, there's always something I can add to it, but I just don't want, like for me, I don't want to get caught into this, uh, this, this sense of perfection, because it's never, it's never truly going to be attainable, as far as perfection. I can provide, produce like good, great quality things, you know, and someone else can like it, but as far as me, uh, and a lot of things that I do, like, I never truly do better. Yeah. This is what I'm going to do. It's going to be the best effort that I can put into it, and then we'll see, you know, how it turns out. And I think with that mindset, for me, uh, the responses have been pretty good, you know, because I'm always trying to be here for, like, community, for people, and uh, I don't know, I kind of, I, I have a lot of high expectations for myself, not only in, in, the art, in the art field, but just in the field in general. Yeah. Whatever, whichever one line of D I have, it's like, uh, I think something, and then I immediately think, how, how can I improve it? Yeah. yeah. No, not definitely, and not to mention, <laughs> what was funny the other day is I actually walked into the, the studio, and um, I, I sat down for like a good five seconds, and I look over at your space, and I see a fucking giant box, <laughs> and I'm like, what the fuck is this? And I look closer, and I'm like, this guy bought a keyboard. Yeah, yeah. Um, but since you've bought it, man, you've just been on it and just, yeah. And, and that's cool. Cause you were before this, you know, pandemic, you were very heavy in the art scene, which you still are heavy in the art scene, but I feel it as, you know, since you're not right now pressure to, or, you know, rushing to get out your art and release it for like, you know, meetups or something like that. It's taking you a step back a little bit to kind of reevaluate what all the arsenals you have, which is your music. And you, you've really, in the last week, transitioned more to, yeah, you're still doing art here and there, but you're really focusing a little bit more on music now again, which I, I, it's something I've been pressuring him to do again. Um, and now he's back at it, and uh, I've, been, I've been hearing, yeah. I, and I've been hearing uh, him work over there in his corner, tapping his keyboard. and, and Yeah, I walked, I actually had that, video, I should throw it on my Instagram, that'd be hilarious, but I walked in. I was, I don't know where I was. What I, what was I doing? I was, I think I was in my room. I was trying to sleep and stuff, but I was like, I just can't. So I, I literally walked in here. You were on your keyboard and I stood at the door for like a minute or two. You didn't notice me. So I closed the door gently. I literally walked over to my seat. Still didn't notice. So I pulled up my phone, started recording you for like five minutes. Finally, I was like, this guy's not noticing me. So I threw one. I know he probably wouldn't have he was so into his music that he just didn't notice anything around him so I, I threw one penny at him and he looked kind of like did I hear something no okay I'm gonna get back to it then I threw another penny at him he looks at me flips me off takes off his headphone goes how long have you been sitting there I'm like yeah I love it five minutes <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I've wanted, since I was a kid, I've wanted to 
I was, yeah. yeah. I think I was like, I was like five, five or six. six. I remember my aunt had a piano. Yeah. Like, like, yeah. Like, like, just, I think, I think, yeah, I was yeah, listening to this, but it was a piano, and I remember just playing, like, stupid sounds. And it would light up, and they always had these pre, these pre set songs, and I would pretend. You know, I'll play the song, I would pretend that I was playing it. Yeah, a lot of pianos come with preset beats so you can play along with it. Yeah, and, uh, yeah, just this summer when I was working, I was working hard, man. I was working ass off, like, I was playing 16 hour shifts and things like that. Yeah. And I had the money not only to, like, help out with bills and things like that, but I had the money to just, like, buy a lot of the gear that I wanted, whether it was just, uh, sound production stuff. Yeah, I remember week by week, like, something new would come in. You got your mixer, and then you got, you got your... What was it? You got a like you got a mini keyboard too, like yeah. Yeah. You got mics. You got and then you finally like last week got the keyboard and it was like you, know, you have the guitar if you need it and then I have a bass if you need it too and it's like so you have all the instruments at your arsenal. The only thing you're missing is a drum kit, but you can honestly mix that now on computers and and a keyboard now. You know what I mean? Yeah. So if you need drum beats, you have it, you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Space of just all kinds of loops, all kinds of tracks and beats and things like that. Yeah. That I can throw in. And uh, now, now that I have this ready to go, but I still have the video that you sent me of all the horror movies. Yeah. So, we're gonna we're we're we're, we're uh, in the in the it's, that's been in the works for about a year now too. I mean, we've just been both busy doing our own things. Though. I mean, you've been busy with the art scene and, and stuff. But I sent him a video a while back of just a bunch of the best horror movie quotes from like the '60s, '30s, '40s, '50s till now. And I was like, "Can you take these and make some like original horror movie music that I can use as background music for my videos?" And he was like, "Yeah, let me see what I can do." Um, but yeah, man. I mean, so we've talked about a little bit about your art. We've talked a little bit about your music. Talk to us a little bit about the personal paradigm, man. How did that come to be? Like, what it, what made you want to do the personal paradigm? Personal paradigm. Um, <laughs> you know, I just had this conversation a couple weeks ago with one of my buddies that I had met um, in the art scene. He's not only uh, a really great guy, but he also has a uh, podcast, uh, Two Minutes with Dick. Okay. Huge, huge, just huge character, great character. And so he asked me the same thing. He's like, personal paradigm, tell me about it. What do you think about it? And um, so the personal paradigm was an inspiration that I got from one of my other buddies, um, Justin, and his as well. And also yours. I mean, like I would see you guys just doing your thing and really throwing out a lot of different uh, content. And podcasting was something that I was a huge fan of because I can, I can listen to music so many different times. Oh yeah, you can listen to the same songs over and over again, and I mean it's good. Don't get me wrong; it's it's what you love and it's what you like listening to. But yeah, I see where you're going with the podcast. The music is great. I love it, but I also love um, you know just listening to someone speak. Yeah, especially every week it's something different. Yeah, conversation, and so um, this huge this guy that I listen to, Alan Watts. Yeah. Restless Soul. He's a huge inspiration on philosophy and justice. Just these different concepts. Um, and so, I listen to a lot of stuff on YouTube. Mixed with like chill step, you know, EDM music. Which is yeah. And so, that was another inspiration. Is that like not only do I like music, you know, different speeches and things like that, but uh, Justine, who is also, she, her thing is Justine K. Yeah. Uh, so, she is, she's, she's a parent. And she's a mom, but she also wants to just be her message. And so she has a blog too, doesn't yeah, she? She's got a blog and yeah. uh, she got Instagram, so go and follow her, check her out. Yeah, definitely. She just followed us, I think, this last <laughs> week, um, just supporting when we added your episode of Personal Paradigm on our channel. She was really neat, yeah. And check out Tunes with it. But I mean, like, these two guys they really inspired me, and in addition to the nights of horror, um, to really look into Anchor and to develop my own message that I wanted to put out um, on, a, on a more public basis and to really just for my own, 
my own sense of just uh, sanity <laughs> to, yeah. to really create uh, documentation and to really create recordings of, you know, how I'm going to be 10 years forward, 15 years forward, and to see where it goes. Um, so some of it's going to have just my input, um, just, just what it is to be someone, to be a person. Um, you know, just being human, there's so many different facets of just, you know, creation, uh, different interests different frames, different walks of life, and so uh, I, wanted I wanted to really just create a space and create an area where people can just say what's on mind. Mm -hmm. Joe Rogan is such a huge inspiration for that. Joe Rogan Experience, good podcast. Yeah, man, I got, like, he was one of the first people that I had seen uh, really just tear it apart. Uh, yeah. And even though like, a lot of people have been doing it for a while, uh, one of the people that really caught my interest back then was... Um, the guy, the guy with, the with the big hair and glasses. glasses. Howard, Howard Stern? Yeah, yeah, that guy. That guy. Uh, I was about to bring him up too. He's a pot. I mean, he's got his XM show every week. Yeah. Yeah, Howard Stern, he's, he's been doing it for years. And just the way that he is, I, read, I think I read his book. Uh, there was a bit, uh, I read his, his, uh, his Rolling Stones special too. Yeah. how he was as a person and how he is currently. And he's just like, yeah, another inspiration that I really could go off on and really just admire but, but I, remember I remember the biggest thing, thing that I had, had remembering remember growing up was that grandma, grandma would always record, record his his shows, shows like on the video recording and then grandma yeah. would get rid of them he just <laughs> didn't like them because he didn't like how it was stern and so and so that caught my interest like at 16 I was like oh who is this guy and I just love the the fact that well, the thing with Howard Stern too, he's so real about everything. Like his opinions are literally just his, and I like I love his work schedule too because I think he works like a day or two a week and gets paid a shitload of money to do it. Serious X, he's like, I think he's, I think, and this is a, I think a, a, a true statistic that literally because of Howard Stern, Serious XM subscriptions went up the roof because he's because he, of him and literally there's a whole package of sirius xm radio i think it's like the best package you can get and that's the only way you can listen to howard stern and uh i mean i just go with the simple package i don't listen to him a lot but i mean I'll, he'll put up something on youtube every now and then i'll listen to but i mean and he's had amazing bands on there i mean he's had metallica perform on there he's had like green day perform on there and but I mean, yeah, literally, it's because of him. Sirius XM is literally like I think they were on the verge of bankruptcy, and like when he joined, like their fucking subscription rate went through the roof because of him. The huge power of the voice, you know, and to really create just your own rendition of your own personal truth and things like that. But going back to just the origins of personal sound, it's already been up for like two weeks now, three weeks. I think we're on really. Is it been, I think it's been longer than that. No. It's probably been like a month or something like that. Yeah. Was the la was episode six the last one that we were on? That was the last episode then, huh? Just to kind of keep it going. Yeah. Yep. Uh, pretty much because that's one of the things is that for me and structure, structure I think structure is great. I think it's a very good way to kind of stay on top of just you know the things you need to do. But if if I can avoid structure, I will do it. Uh, yeah. Because I don't want to. That's just I, it's just another rule for me that I don't want to follow. Yeah. Uh, and you know, reading all these books and learning and just educating myself and becoming someone who's original. Uh, I look past a lot of these different paradigms that we kind of set up for ourselves and put ourselves in a box, essentially. And so with Personal Paradigm, I want to create the space where we can suspend all of those different uh, concepts, all those different constructs uh, within a safe space to do so and to really just um, shoot the shit, essentially, like uh, coining your, your, your channel. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, like, yeah, like the biggest, biggest the biggest uh, question, uh, question and the biggest, biggest conversation, conversation that I had with Two Minutes with Vic was, was um, I, I kind of tie it to a stop light. You know, everyone, everyone stops, stops at red. red. Everyone, everyone goes, goes at green. green. Sometimes, Sometimes we slow down at yellow. yellow. And, and so, so that, that is a paradigm, paradigm that we all follow as far as yeah. just, you know, this is what you need to do to drive. And, and so, so what do you need to do to be human? Who knows? Like, that's another paradigm that we kind of create for ourselves and... Um, 
yeah, so yeah, to create so space, space around just being yourself, yourself being, being a person, being human. You need to get a t-shirt made just for you. Yeah. I'll even get one too. Personal paradigm. Personal paradigm. Dude, Teespring, man. That's it. That's yeah. where we... Speaking of Teespring, we got merch on Teespring. Shameless merch plug. Links in the bio. There you go. Uh, well, Teespring for us, I mean, it's it was easy. I mean, we literally, you literally go on their website. They're super easy. You just, you make, you, you know, you start your merch. And it used to be a lot harder before. And they've changed policies now, but before it was, you put up a certain number of shirts and a certain number of, of what you want, and if no one bought it, then you would have to pay that money from your pocket. But now, they have it up just where anyone can buy, you don't have to, you know, people buy, they buy, if they don't, they don't. But you can put, you can put limited edition stuff too, or like there's a set time for like, okay, at this date, this is the last day you can buy it, and after that, it's gone forever. They got t-shirts, stickers, socks. Um, pillows, posters. The only thing they don't have is like hats and beanies. That's it. But they have, yeah, that's where you come in. Um, but no, yeah, Teespring is it's really cool. And we have merch on the site right now. We have a Knights of Horror logo t-shirt. We have Miles Horror Podcast t-shirt. We have a Shoot the Shit t-shirt. And then we have a t-shirt of all three of the logos. The most Knights of Horror logo, Miles Horror Podcast, and Shoot the Shit. Which I'm waiting on the Miles Horror Podcast logo one pretty soon. I might throw it on the fridge right there. Um, yeah, I ordered a sample of it um, just to see it, and uh, let me know if you want anything. I get a discount because it's my store. So, <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, and going back to it, I mean, a lot of a lot of two of the T-shirts that we have and stickers that we have are your logo. So, and the shoot the shit, yeah. And I really want to get the Mad Slash Games. It depends. I mean, if we get up, I'll, I'll definitely probably make shirts for me, Ruth, and I, or me, Ruth, and Kevin. Um, that way at least we have our shirts and we can kind of get the, the word out there, but if we grow bigger, then definitely going to get a shirt made. It just takes time, man. I mean, literally this channel, we're starting from the ground up. That's how Nights of Horror started. We started from the ground up. It took us two or three years just to get where we're at now, but we, we never gave up. And that's the thing I tell Kevin and Ruth. I'm like, biggest thing about a channel, always promote because promotion, it's a big thing in, in, in the world of YouTube on social media. And just never give up. You got to just keep creating content, whether it be one view or 1,000 views. Like, you just got to keep going. And, okay, if that one view didn't do good, you guys know your mistake. You know, it's like, okay, we obviously that video didn't perform well. Let's film something else. Well, that's the thing, too, is that I remember we, we, we touched up on it a little bit during my episode. But being a content creator and seeing the Nights of Horror perform so well since October, just that one idea of, hey, horror season's over, what do we do now? Boom. All of November, interviewing the scare actors and keeping yeah. that continuity going, but not only doing things for your show and, and building viewership, but also just building connections and people that just support each other. I mean, I think that's, that's the second piece is just who else can I connect with in the community that will support me? And I think that's one of the strongest facets, not only that we are experiencing now in this crisis, it's just people supporting each other. And it's like, well, if you're going to support me, great. If not, then what do I need? Yeah. And I think that's what I loved about uh, Scared Appreciation Month was when we started it, I don't think people knew exactly what it was. And then people were like, as it was happening, it was like people were catching on. Scare actors were tuning in that we didn't even have booked. And I was getting messages left and right from scare actors. Hey, do you got any more room on the show? And it's like, sorry, dude, we're booked for like the rest of the November, but I definitely want to have you on. Like, it, like I said in your podcast, if I could have kept going, I would have. Hands down, 100% would have kept going. However, it took a toll on me and Sammy a little bit. You know I mean? Sammy's coming straight from work just to go back to work. You know what I mean? And it's like... I know how it is Jobs, yeah, I was working days. I got off work at two thirty, come home and take a nap. And by the time I took my nap, it was like two and a half hour nap or something. And Sammy would come down. I'd wake up. If you guys don't know, when I wake up, I'm I'm a very cranky person. I think that's a lot of people when they wake up. But 
I am definitely not a morning person. If, if, I, if I'm getting up and going to a job, it's different. Cause yeah. I'm getting paid to be a morning person. So, like, yeah. Even that, dude. I was not a morning person on that either. Like, I just don't want to freaking be here right now. And that's why I'm glad I went back to nights. I mean, I get to be up all night and then sleep in and wake up, take my shower, go to work. And But... I mean, with Character Appreciation Month, man, I'm, I'm glad it worked out the way it did, and I can't wait to do it again, hopefully, this season. Um, again, still trying to figure out what what, what the season's going to look like as far as with my job and everything because my job does put a big um, impact on that whole Character Appreciation Month and what we were doing with that. I mean, we were getting interviews at, like, 5 or 6 in the afternoon. By that time, I'm at work. So, I mean, it, it, one of two things will happen. Either by that time, I'll hopefully get a morning position, um, or, um, I mean, we gotta, we gotta, we gotta do multiple on the weekend. We have to do like four or five on a Saturday or like four or five on a Sunday. You know what I mean? We have to stack them. We're gonna have to plan it and time it, um, that we have enough time with every scare actor. Gives it enough transition time for like us to take a little break in between, upload everything and get set up for the next one. So that's just the biggest thing. That's what's been on my mind a lot this uh, this season since I've I've picked up this night position is how that is going to happen this year. Because with our channel, I want the best guest experience, guest audience experience ever. I want to please the fans. I want to give the fans what they want. And Scaracter Appreciation Month was a big hit for us it's probably one of the biggest hits we've had in a while i'm talking each podcast hitting over 100 views or more that's big numbers for this podcast and i mean i think one of the podcasts actually hit 8,000 views yeah and i mean and could they continue to go back people will continue to go back and rewatch them or watch them if they haven't watched them that was the first year and we had a lot of big characters on the show Merrick was there. Hostel was there. Billy and Lucy were there. These are people who are like the face of the company for Not Scary Farm. You know, we had uh, the Orphan there. We had uh, She Wolf was there. People from Mazes were there. I mean, you know, we had so many amazing people, so many veterans that have been at Knots probably for 10 plus years, or some people who are just new to Knots and been there for like five years or lower. You know what I mean? And they had so much stories and so much great stuff. I mean, and you know just people that we liked that entertained us you know what i mean and and we've met again that's how i met jen and i record a podcast with her now you know that's how i met lucio and i record a podcast with him now um this season that's how i met ruth i mean with ruth i mean i knew who she was and everything and she was supposed to be on our podcast prior to that talking about a, a short film she was in that uh, my buddies at fracture compass did um but she couldn't make that session so that's how i met ruth was through haunt i knew ruth as her character the orphan before i knew her as a person ruth and now i know her as a person and we're fucking talking every day playing xbox every day it's like we're, we're trying to build i mean so with with this channel what i'm trying to get at is I've had so many great opportunities, and they've just turned to even bigger opportunities and more openings to, to other things that I would never thought in a million years would come. Sounds like, I mean, sounds like, and with everything, is always like starting small, seeing what you can kind of grasp around and build those techniques in, and really gain, gain respect, you know, yeah. starting your stripes and taking it day by day and seeing, you know, how far you've came, but to see now, like, I go, <sighs> Where you would be um, when you first started this thing? Because I know, like, you had to do a couple of host swaps and things like that. But yeah. yeah, it was it was a big. It was it was a tough beginning uh, when we did host swaps because I went to two hosts and after I was going for a third one, I was like, "Fucking hope this works out, man!" Because I really want to keep this podcast going. If I don't get it, it came down to if I didn't get a third host, I was literally just gonna stop doing the podcast. Oh, wow. so and it it was that it was either I get a third host or I stop doing this podcast. And Sammy came along, and here we are, fucking at episode eighty-nine, almost to a hundred. This is episode eighty-nine. I mean, we don't have all of them on Spotify. I think I started from Tormented Society on, um, because I didn't know about Anchor. But um, now that I know about Anchor, every podcast from then on is is on here, is on Spotify. So not every podcast is on Spotify or any other of the podcasting sites that we're on. Yeah, if you want to listen from episode one from where we've started to now, I mean, it is, I mean, I go back and watch some of my first videos and I'm just like, 
did I really say that? Was I really like that? So for any podcaster who wants to start their own channel, what is like your top five mistakes that you've learned? Like rule number one, don't. Rule number one, um, don't sound like a fucking idiot. <laughs> for one, I mean. I, there was a thing, and it's still kind of, it was kind of an inside joke, and it's actually, it's actually now in our new intro, we actually had a guy come in, my, my buddy Seth, who's actually, he was a scare actor, he came through and everything, he, he's a voice recorder, and he recorded a, a really cool intro, I don't know if you've heard it lately, on the last couple podcasts, if you listen to our intro, he, he's the voiceover who does our new intro, but the the joke for the podcast when we first started and I'm glad I brought it back and and am keeping it going forward now but the joke when we first started this podcast was we're recording from a dumpy little studio in the outskirts of Los Angeles. Yeah, that sounds about sounds about accurate. I mean touch it up a little bit. No, yeah, and it's it's gotten better over the years, but um that was one of my things and and for all you guys who listen to the radio a lot the biggest inspiration I got from that was from Jack FM. Broadcasting from a dumpy little building in beautiful downtown Culver City. Like, that, I used to love Jack FM. I mean, that guy is fucking hands down one of the greatest radio voices of all time. And so, in the new, um, in the new intro, uh, Seth says, uh, broadcasting live from a dumpy little studio in beautiful Norwalk, California. It's the Mindless Horror Podcast with your host, Anthony and Sam. So, we've kind of kept that joke going. Um, for all you guys who've been here since the beginning, and I hope you guys remember that, um, that is something that I've, I've loved uh, doing. Um, Jack FM is a huge inspiration for that. So, um, But other things you should uh, you know, not do as a podcaster, um, I guess I would say don't... Um, I guess don't overwork your your crew. I think that's why the first two hosts left. Um, I mean, I guess I mean I, I I wasn't. I don't think I pushed George a lot in the beginning. Um, I think I, I really wanted just to keep it going week by week, and I would and I would go pick him up and bring him back, record. We'd hang out for a little bit, then I'd take him home. Um, I mean, I guess that kind of got a little annoying, but and and that you know, but. I'm a type of guy that if you're going to do a podcast, you got to keep going week by week. Yeah, and especially with channels, I mean, TV shows, they, they, they hold the gold standard, you know, having something at least every week. Or every yeah. And then you take that hiatus off for a little vacation and then come back and film more. And it's like, I get that. And I think, I, 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 I no, no talking shit to George or anything. I just think he didn't want to, I don't think he could keep up with what, you know, I wanted to do week by week. Yeah. Um, but it all worked out in the best for him because, you know, he dropped out and started doing his comic books. So that's really cool. But, and then when I got Jeremiah, I mean, it was hard for him to come out because he lived all the way out in like Fullerton. So for him to come out all the time. And not only that, he came out because of his work hours. He came out like we would be recording podcasts at like 1130 at night on a weekday. You know what I mean? So it was like, I'd get off work. I'd be somewhat tired, but we'd still record a podcast. And then, when Sammy came around, which was the final stop as to if, if I don't get a co-host, I'm, I'm quitting this podcast, and, and that would be the end of that. Um, Sammy came around, and he was like, you know, it's easier with him because, you know, he's he's down the street. He comes here, and he'll hang out for the day. We'll record a podcast, or he knows. he Me and him know each other now. We, he knows the way I think. I know the way he thinks as far as... Uh, yeah, as far as content goes, you know, we know each other. We know what questions to ask. We know how to set things up. It's like it really clicked the first time we started doing it. And when we started doing guests, we kind of had the same mindset as to, okay, let's ask these questions. Let's do this. Let's do that. And we'll see where it goes. Find three. Uh, so that number three? Finding, finding somebody you just vibe with. Just finding someone you vibe with. Uh, four, I would say just, uh, have something, uh, a consistent topic as far as just, um, you know, I mean, this podcast is mainly based around horror. We talked a little bit of horror this year, uh, this, um, episode, but have a consistent topic that you know you're going to want to keep talking about week after week. And the best thing to do, obviously, with the podcast is, um, of course, some of the heavy hitters, there's always movies, video games, TV shows, 
or just news about about the media world and and stuff. So I mean, when we started, it was just news about horror. Bloody Disgusting was our go-to place for all the horror news, and we would just talk about news that caught our attention. And then as we started transferring more to guests this past like year, um, we've slowly kind of been fading out of that because we want to become more of a talk show more than a podcast. Yeah, we'll throw in some horror news every now and then, but the focus is to have like a talk show. I think prior to you guys moving in, the the goal was to actually turn the garage into a fucking talk show studio where I was going to have like I was going to have a desk and and you know, I was going to have some seats and stuff and then have a camera set up much like how you see on the late night talk shows. Yeah, it's still in the table. Um, if Uncle Hano is going to plan on moving out, I don't know where that's at. But if that does happen and we move your dad stuff in there, I think that's the plan is to expand the studio. Just expand it from not only just this little room, but to go out there. I mean, if we can make that the all like podcasting filming area, that would be the goal. But I mean, of course, and this would remain the office area of the studio, you know what I mean? Because all of our equipment's in here and stuff, but I want to turn the garage eventually into a full-blown studio, like a production studio where we have, like, soundproof walls, lighting, uh, backdrops, whether it be green screen or just a, a simple colored backdrop, um, you know, chairs, couches, um, refrigerators, uh, maybe, like, a, a bar table for if we have, like, a group podcast or something, you know, uh, like a, a screening room of some sort, you know, just a, a little, every corner and everything has something relevant. Maybe one corner will be the podcasting area, one corner would be the filming area, one corner would be the live streaming area, you know, one corner would just be just a production area. So every corner is kind of occupied with something, that way it's, I, I've planned it all out in my head, dude, I, I have a whole full on plan about it, and well, I mean, it may happen, it may not, but only time will tell. For now, I am very fine of what I have. I mean, I can fit up to four people in here, and I got one on my chair. If I have another, Sammy usually takes your chair if, you know, we do something, and then I have my guest in the middle couch. So, like, it works out right now. So, But if we ever decide to expand and grow, that's the plan for the garage. So. It does sound, I can vision it in my head, too, as far as just getting something going. It's a good way to kind of just leave the equipment out too rather than having to pull it out every time and plugging it in and so everything will just be already plugged in. You just got to flip a switch and it's ready to go. The only thing you'll have to set up is just cameras, but that's nothing. Um Andrew, where can everybody find you on social media? Where can they find the personal paradigm? Where can they find everything? Social media. Uh yeah, so there's a lot of man so I'm going to organize it. It's going to get set up. But pretty much check me out on at graphics by Andrew. Just the way it sounds, the way it's spelled. G-R-A-P-H-I-C-S by Andrew. Uh, check me out on my website, graphicsbyandrew.square.site. Anchor.fm slash the personal paradigm. I'm also available on Spotify, Google Podcasts. Uh, you name it, I'm there. Except for Apple, which is coming soon. But yeah, yeah, I'll be there. there. And uh, let's see, Instagram, Instagram Facebook, Facebook, Graphics by Andrew. Andrew. Usually Graphics by Andrew is the title. Definitely. Uh, I kind of go by and stick with. Um, there was one at first, but I'm back to Graphics by Andrew, and that's the one that's more consistent that you can kind of find it. Yeah. So, um, well, that is going to do it for this podcast. Um, it was a good hour and something, so. Yeah, I got it. Good time. Yeah, good. good little podcast of us just kind of catching up and, and talking about problems in the world and our opinions on stuff. But uh, thanks, everyone, for listening to another episode of the Miles Sword Podcast. We are now officially on the road to 100 within the final 10 coming up to 100, man. So I don't know who will be on the 100th episode yet. I don't know where we'll be in the world when the 100th episode happens. So until then, keep listening because next week's guest is going to be a good one. It's Scott Ditterman from... Um, Oh, of course, a, a veteran haunt actor from Not Scary Farm, now a manager over at Queen Mary's Dark Harbor, and a uh, jack of all trades, if you will. But he will be on the podcast this week talking a little bit about his history, uh, some funny stories, and talking about what he's doing now. So definitely tune into the Scott Diderman podcast. It's going to be a fun one. Definitely go give the par personal paradigm some love and, and listen to his, uh, my cousin Andrew's podcast. Very great podcast, amazing topics, and he's got really good guests either going to be coming on or have already been on. Um, so definitely you don't want to miss out on the personal paradigm. And go follow my cousin on, uh, on Andrew.
Graphics. Go follow my cousin on Andrew. Uh, go follow my cousin on Instagram at Graphics by Andrew, um, and hit him up for commissions or anything if you want any work done, because he'll be happy to do so and work with you. It's very easy to work with, and he's very straight to the point of what you need. So that's that. Um, to find us at Instagram is at the Knights of Horror and Twitter is at Knights of Horror. We are also on Anchor and Spotify, Breaker. Uh, Google Podcasts, Radio Public, three other ones, I don't know. <laughs> but we're on there. Um, and, of course, subscribe to the channel for more content, uh, of course, if you're already here. Um, but if you have not subscribed, hit the subscribe button and hit that bell notification to be aware anytime we put up a new video. Also, hit that like button because it helps out a lot. And leave some comments below so Andrew can read them because, you know, positivity is key, right? All right, guys, thank you so much for listening, and we will see you guys soon. Yes, sir.